Uh, hey guys, so yeah, today in this video, I'm just gonna be teaching you guys pretty much uh, uh, a video that I've always just wanted to do, and uh, yeah, gonna be doing the old school style with uh, PowerPoint, and uh, yeah, uh, I've always get questions all the time now with people um, asking me, calling me every day, FaceTime about their puppies, uh, they need help on puppies, or uh, what's every advice that I should like any type of advice that I can give them and yeah hopefully this video does help you guys out so yeah actually uh, let's get right off it so yeah this is actually how to have a successful litter with your boy Matt and uh, yeah there's my son Boogie right there at Matt's Kennels uh, you can follow my Instagram right there if you want to if you don't I don't care uh, I'm just here to teach you guys and uh, yeah let's get right off it I you know I could have edited it more but here is something what I actually really call the golden time. Um, so that it pretty much means that puppies need colostrum from the mom's milk within the first one or two days or even three days. And what this means, you know, colostrum, right? You guys see the different colors of milk. You know, colostrum is more, you know, when you, when you have, when mom's making milk for the first day, her milk is going to look more yellow and stained and nasty looking, but actually that's a really good thing to have with, with the mom's milk colostrum you know this right here it, it provides you know immunity for your puppies it, it's it's you know in terms of biology it's passive immunity uh, versus you know uh, active immunity you know passive immunity is like getting colostrum or it's from the placenta for the mom or you know even getting shots you know vaccines like covid for example so this right here is really important which is why you know at the back of the label when say for example if you don't have mom in the picture and um, it's always like recommended for to for the puppies to have mom's milk the colostrum of the mom's milk for the first one two or even three days so if you skip this part right if you do not get this part right with the, the colostrum not saying that if, you, if your puppies don't get this that they're going to get sick or die no it's just it provides a better chance of survival and for their immune systems to be strong because they're getting the colostrum from the milk you know it's it's antibodies that's provided for them so on to the next one so as i said you know what happens if mom is not in the picture well you're forced to tube feed or bottle feed and all that stuff you know these supplies and you can get it from amazon lifeline pet supplies you can get it, you buy books it's, it's a lot cheaper and i show you guys videos right here you know i can say you know, there's pros and cons when, when it comes with two feeding versus bottle feeding. So first, I'm going to talk about two feeding. Two feeding, uh, the pros about it. It's it's fast. It's efficient. It's sanitary. It can be clean. You know, if you do it right, everything has to be clean and sanitized before you do everything, pretty much. And but the cons about it, right? The cons about it, which is why I made a separate video, and I will update this soon, hopefully, if I if it ever does come down to it. And but um the cons about it it's it's scary for beginners for first timers um, people text me uh, saying they don't know how to two feed and I always tell them if you try your best to at least try to learn it from a professional try to get a professional a vet that can at least teach you how to do it um, so because if you mess up you know if you you can actually kill the puppy uh, you can possibly put the tubes inside the uh, the larynx towards the lungs and therefore, if you were to inject, you would actually kill the puppies, uh, possibly like drowning them, or possibly uh, can lead to aspiration pneumonia. So, really, the the tube is supposed to go towards the esophagus lining, right? Which goes towards the stomach, and then you inject, and the puppy gets full if you do it correctly. So that's just uh, you know the brief summary of it. And then on the other hand, bottle feeding, which me personally, I don't bottle feed. Uh, just because of right here, you know, for the good thing about it is it's easy. Anybody can do it. Your baby can do it. You know, little kids can do it. Even grandma can do it. So it's easy for beginners. You know, anybody can do it. That's that's the only thing I can say about it. But the cons is really you, you don't know how much the puppy is getting, and you know, because because sometimes when you're feeding the puppy, milk comes out of the mouth, and you don't really know how much food you're getting and all that and. Uh, how much food is the puppy really getting? Is is the puppy sucking up air? Is it eating air and it seems full when really it's not full? They're, like there's a lot of cons of why I don't like bottle feed. I don't bottle feed no more because I already know how to damn two feed. I'm a damn professional about that. So um, really, I want you guys to learn how to two feed. You know, if that's a skill that I would recommend for you guys to learn, it's how to two feed, bro. It's hella fast because you know 
it because it, let's say for example like that picture of me right there with my uncle me and my little cousin th there's all these puppies let's say for example mom was not in the picture and you were to bottle feed every one of them and then bottle feeding takes around like 20 to 30 minutes to feed at least one puppy because literally you know you cannot like suck like they cannot suck like babies like like hella fast you know babies came and suck fast too and if for puppies you know they have to get little drops little drops little drops and it's gonna take like 20 30 minutes for them to to finally finish up and you know they don't get a, a you know it, it's so slow for them to get food and therefore you're feeding the first pup boom second pup third pup fourth pup fifth pup you're already like an hour in or maybe two hours in, and then boom you gotta head back to the first puppy again so and it, it's like a domino effect you know you just have to you know, go back and forth, go back and forth with the first, second, third, fourth, and you have to go back to the first pup again. So, you, like, you, you see what I mean here? So, what I'm trying to say is that body feeding takes forever, and um, it is a possibility you can ask for the puppy. Where two feeding, on the other hand, it's it's hella fast. You know, I can two feed a puppy within like under a minute if I, you know, if I do, I, I can do it pretty damn good now. And then just feed all the puppies, you know, puppy one, puppy two, puppy three, puppy four, puppy five, boom, and then like within five minutes they're all good and then boom I'll go to sleep it's night night for me you know it's that's the good thing about two feeding uh, versus bottle feeding but if you don't have to feed you know just feed the puppy you know just feed the puppy you know do what's best for you you know everybody does their own thing differently and whatever works for you works for you and that's it you know that's that's all I can say so and how often to feed puppies right uh, newborns one to two weeks on average uh, should be fed around two to three hours um, ages two to three weeks on average should be fed three to four hours but this is why I said but you know there's no definitive answer to this as well um, sometimes puppies they get sick you know, like feeding puppy syndrome whether they're recovering or they're the runt of the litter or they they just grow slow in general um, if they're if you know they're weaker or smaller in size compared to the litter mates they might have to be a week after like a week later before you can start introducing them into um, solids and weaning them or maybe they have to be fed more often as well so maybe like to one or two hours even earlier than than the other uh, rest of the litter so they're just smaller in general and you feel like they're whining constantly within after the first hour of feeding then yeah you might possibly have to feed them again so let me repeat that if a puppy is like a runt small or just weak you might have to feed them you know more often than compared to you know you know two to three hours you might have to feed them one to two hours you know so you, you have to judge how the puppy is feeling you know every puppy every dog every breed is different you know, it's not this is just not to say French Bulldogs because I just you know explicitly only do French Bulldogs um, some puppies I have to feed maybe possibly every an hour and a half you know it really all depends but you just have to judge the way or look how how the puppies are feeling you know if they're because most of the time puppies should be sleeping and eating 90 percent of the time so let's let's get right on with that so what kinds of milk do i recommend uh with powder it powder it's pet ag milk replacement with plus or uh, nutrivit and um i like to me personally i like to buy the stuff that require that has the uh, microorganisms just the extra edge but uh, in both cases I did have um, really success with it I did try goat milk I, I really wasn't a fan um, during that time my puppies got sick for some reason so I just really steered away and with me with, with you know with puppy milk it's it's formulated for dogs so I just stick with puppies and dogs just because they have a higher protein intake uh, compared to fats because goat milk is more fat and uh, in the macros and um, yeah so formulated puppy milk on the other hand is it's already made for you and uh, if you don't want to get in all that you know doing all the measurements and everything get that you know formulated puppy milk you, you can get that it's, it's already made for you but it runs out faster you're gonna have to buy more compared to powder where you know it, it makes more because it's powder and uh, it saves a lot more money but whatever works best for you you know you can go with powder you can go with formulated puppy milk I've used all three of these things we use some other stuff but you know whatever you want to go with and uh, yeah that's pretty much it so but wait <laughs> is what I'm saying again powder you know make sure when you're doing powder I always got to say this uh, 
make sure you mix it right. You have to mix this right. Always read the instructions, okay? Always read the instructions on whatever puppy milk replacer that you have. Never use tap water. Always use spring water or a bottle of water, you know, whatever. And the temperature is always correct, okay? The temperature is, is always correct. And because if, if it's too hot, it can burn the puppy, possibly kill the puppy. If it's too cold, it can put the puppy's body into a shock. And they can't even regulate their own body temperature. So you're just making it worse, and therefore the puppy dies again. So formulated milk, just make sure uh, that's already made for you. Uh, just make sure that the water, the temperature is lukewarm. You know, when you touch it, make sure your hand is clean, obviously, and that it is warm. Not too hot, not too cold. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then here we're just going to the weaning stage. At ages three and a half weeks, four weeks old, they they can be ready to start weaning, you know, on average. So, um, as I told you guys before, sometimes it can get it can get delayed. Sometimes you might have to go start at five weeks, you know, if it's the runt of the litter. Um, they you know, sometimes their the body is not able, it's not mature enough to start digesting like solids and foods on its own. So, um, yeah, but. You know, symptoms to really kind of tell if they're ready or not. It's say, for example, like mom, she's getting tired, or you know, um, the puppy's teeth start coming in, and then when she's when the puppies are sucking on the mom, and it hurts, and she wants to like get away and stuff. It kind of tells like, hey, I think they're they're ready to start feeding. And uh, here's just the the stuff that I personally use: uh, single grain cereal by Gerber, Diamond Puppies, and then the Manapro Nurse All that I start around like weeks four or five and uh yeah that's just uh when i'm when i'm crushing it up in a blender in a in a blender <laughs> uh for the with the with the diamond puppy and then i mix it with the uh the powder just because there's a lot of it and uh, just for the extra uh nutrients and calories as well so uh, that's what i do for my winning stage and uh yeah and then uh last last two things here is uh, how to tell if your puppies are good okay it's number one you always have to weigh them daily and then you're probably telling me like oh Matt do I do I really gotta do that shit you know do I really gotta do that I'm here to say you know I used to think the same too yeah you gotta do that man you, you have to weigh the puppies daily bro you know you, you have to do this to make sure that they are on a good path on um, they're, they're growing you have to make sure they're growing you know puppies anything that's growing you have to make sure that they're growing every day about half an ounce every day because if a puppy is losing weight or the weight's you know steadying it, it's it's telling you that something's wrong with the puppy or the puppy's not getting enough food and the puppy's not getting enough food they can get sick and they're not growing and they can weak and they die and that's that's pretty much it you, you just have to know and as i said on average they have to grow about half an ounce every day or 25 to 30 grams a day on average but if it's less than that, it, it should be okay. But as long as they are growing every day, that's what matters the most. You know, weigh them once a day. It could be the morning, it could be at nighttime, whatever you want to do. At least weigh them every day, every single puppy too. It matters a lot. And I said, most of the time, and these are my uncle's puppies right here. Most of the time, they should be sleeping slash eating 90% of the time. They should be sleeping 90% of the time, eating. And then they're done. They go. They should go to sleep, and that's it. They should not be whining or crying because if they're whining or crying. There is something wrong with either the puppy or the temperature is not correct or the environment just sucks ass. There's a lot. So, how to tell the puppies are bad or sick? Right. The poop should never be red. They should never smell bloody. It should never be diarrhea. Well, it depends on diarrhea. I'll talk about that in a bit. But as I said, the ish, the poop should never be red or smell like blood. You know, like you know when you you know you have a nosebleed or you bit your lip or you bit your tongue or you got punched in the face and you, you taste your own blood and it tastes like silver. That well, it's it should smell like silver too as well. And the reason why I say this, you know, why poop should never be red or smell bloody, is because once that happens, I can honestly say. Things are gonna go downhill from that. You know, things can go really bad. I can say that. It, it can be a diagnosis of just fading puppy syndrome or um, coccidia, or, you know, it could be a, a parasite inside your puppy. There's really no, you know, correct answer. I can't really tell you what it is exactly. Sometimes it just happens. It could be the environment, the puppy is just sick, anything. 
diarrhea, dehydration. It, it could be a lot of things. So if if this happens, right? If your puppy's poop is blood and it starts to smell silvery or metal, take it to the vet. Take it to the vet and try to get that fixed ASAP. And hopefully, it's you know just a parasite that can be treated ASAP. But either than that, you, you know there's only so much that we can do as breeders and vets as well I can say that you know no matter how much we do sometimes puppies just can't make it so uh, and also number two is uh, constant crying or whining uh, as I said 90% of the time you guys puppies should be sleeping and then that other 10% should be eating that's that's pretty much it they, they should be sleeping most of the time they should not be making any noises or crying or um, just crying so and then check for dehydration uh, I made a video about this, but briefly, I'm just go over it. Um, so, it, you know, let's just say, for example, like this is a puppy, if we need a white arm. A puppy, if you, if you you get the skin and you pull it back, and if it retracts back down like that, a puppy is, is, is hydrated. That, that's a good thing. But if a puppy is dehydrated, you pull the skin up, and, you, and it, what's to say, if I let go and it stays back up like this, it stays up puppy's dehydrated or the you know the puppy's legs are really skinny or it looks really skinny and frail and uh yeah that could be a sign of dehydration and uh you know fading puppy syndrome so and then supplements to help with puppies um you don't really need these but i could recommend it um i use ben and back plus uh this is just a gel for uh, microorganisms that you can give to your puppies uh, at a really small stage and uh you know this is stuff to help with the diarrhea they have maybe maybe that diarrhea is not a big of a problem um, I'm not saying that diarrhea can be bad like if you have diarrhea if your puppies have diarrhea it's not a it's not an indicator that your puppy's gonna die or have any puppy, uh, puppy syndrome no it's it's just you know it's common for puppies to have like babies and uh, you know bending back plus should actually help you know, solidify that but if they're still you know eating milk it's it's common for puppies to have to have diarrhea so as long as it, it is not bloody you should be okay so Vinny back plus I recommend that uh, for the floor it's just the same thing but it's in a powder version so I've used that and then skills to learn if you ever need it when it's necessary I can just say learn how to two feed and learn how to IV fluids you know pref you know do all that with the lactator ringers I, I'm just gonna say that I do have a separate video with two feeding I'll just link that in the description below just uh, just the in-depth tutorial we're pretty much uh, what it is, uh, what you need, uh, where do I get it at, and uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. But um, yes, uh, that's pretty much it. Hopefully, you guys learned something from that. That's just a quick video. I wish I can uh, go over this a little longer, but uh, I will go over this. You know, once I start going live, when I hit a thousand subscribers, and uh, you guys can ask me all the questions you guys want, and uh, hopefully, I taught you guys you know a good amount. Um, hopefully, I was actually able to to teach you how to you know. Be more confident, you know, when it comes to litters. Um, for you first timers out there having your first litter, I know it's a scary thing. It is a scary experience, especially you know if it's a different breed, like you know, you know, high maintenance breed like English, uh, Frenchies, uh, exotics, bullies, you know, whatever, whatever that requires a C-section. It, it is hard to take care of these dogs, man, with snooby face faces and stuff it is a hard breed to take care of it's not just like your ordinary chihuahuas and german shepherds where they can just take care of it themselves no it's it's a whole different ball game and you know some of you guys always call me or text me you know they say they that they, they can do chihuahuas and german shepherds they don't really have to do shit but when it comes to having the frenchie first frenchie litter they their first frenchie litters died or some of the puppies died it's i'm saying it's a whole different ball game so hopefully um I taught you guys, you know, a good amount, and uh, yeah, I think in the future I will, I will make a book about this, you know, if I was to get um, bigger. So, uh, this is just the beginning of my journey. Hopefully, you guys can uh, stay tuned with my journey, and then I taught you guys, you know, good enough. So, uh, this is just the things that I've learned on the way when it comes to breeding and uh, whelping puppies, and uh, I can whelp puppies for a living too, but I decided not to just because it is a painful experience, and I know how painful it is for to lose puppies and stuff like that and you know some people text me all the time like how do I handle this I don't handle this shit man you know this is why I'm making videos for you guys and it's it's painful it is painful I cannot handle those puppies dying on me either too you know I cry I'm a human being you guys even me as a breeder 
these dogs are not just for money. These dogs are just, you know, they're a passion to me. When I lose puppies, I fucking cry like a little bitch, man. And uh, it's painful, So, which is why I started making videos for you guys. So, I right, guys, love you guys so much. And um, that's pretty much it. I should have made a full camera with that, but I love you guys so much. And, uh, and yeah, love you guys. Peace. My best friend, bro. Yeah. My best friend. It's your boy. Come on, Touch me, boy. So tough. Woo. Damn, boy. You so fuck, boy. You're a muscle, boy. You're so boy. Oh, you so cute, boy. Big ass head, boy.